And hello again, dear ones, Reverend Robert with you. This is the Science of Mind and Spirit Lecture Series. Happens every Saturday morning here on the New Thought Media Network. And I am one of a member, a number of people. Look at this lineup. Victoria Bomberry, Reverend Victoria, Reverend Ken Gordon, Reverend Elzia, Rachel McCreary, Reverend uh, Michelle Wadley, Tracy Brown, myself, every week here at 9 a.m. And what we're doing is we're exploring the science of mind by Ernest Holmes. And each and every week, we've been divvying this up and taking different, uh, different chapters. Last week was the chapter on the body by Reverend Michelle Wadley. Thank you, Reverend Michelle. What a great talk. Uh, I, I love listening to other ministers' perspectives of this work because just like any great book, I, we all have our different interpretations. We all have our different perceptions of what Dr. Holmes was trying to say here and what he was saying here. And that's what we're all about is exploring that and we do it each saturday here at 9 a.m so next week's going to be tracy brown last week was dr michelle and please know all of these uh all of these programs are archived on both our youtube and our facebook pages so you can go back and you can watch the previous episodes and and uh, and look at what we're talking about so uh, so that's that okay other thing that you might want to know good morning ty Good to see you, brother, all the way from the East Coast. Grateful you're with us. Uh, one of the other things that we do want you to know is this is an interactive program. So uh, I don't see that you're here unless you're commenting. If you're commenting, thank you. Welcome aboard. Uh, if you don't want to comment, that's fine. No worries. Not going to hold that against you. And we encourage questions. And so as I share with you today on the chapter that's mine to share about, if you have questions, please put them in the chat as we go along. Uh, we will have an opportunity later on if you'd like to come into uh, the studio live and, uh, and be on air with me and ask questions. Uh, that'll be great. We can do that. That's a pretty easy thing to do as long as you have a camera and a microphone. And uh, overall, again, uh, questions in the comments are greatly appreciated. It gives us a chance to interact with you and make sure that we're covering this material in a way that makes sense to you. Uh, so, all right. I'm going to get started with a very brief prayer and spiritual mind treatment just to get centered. Ah. To again say welcome to each and every one that's in this room for in this experience right here with me now for what I know is there is truly only one life, one God, one source, one supply, one infinite wellspring of everything. I call that one life God, but I know that the, the one reveals itself by many names, by many, many different icons and images and, and, and opportunities. What I know is I know the oneness is revealing itself as each and every one that is here in this divine moment, watching on a replay or at another time, wherever, whenever, it's still all part of the oneness that is God's life flowing through and into creation. As my life, as my voice, as the life of the hands of your work, of all that you are here to do on this planet, each one, we are coming together collectively as a human family, recognizing, awakening moment by moment to not only our spiritual magnificence, but to the, to the deep interconnectedness, to the deep oneness that we all are a part of, that we are all living here and now. So what I bring forth this day, nothing new, there's no new idea in what this is today. This is an exploration, an opportunity to open a conversation, a dialogue into a deeper understanding of the universal truth and how I may and how you may and how each one of us may use these universal laws, these universal truths of absolute uh, prosperity and abundance and harmony and love and light and beauty, how we may use that in our daily lives. So I am excited. I am excited for what it reveals itself here this day and excited for what happens here this day. Most especially grateful to know God's got this so I can get out of the way and let it be. Let go and let God be God. And so it is. Mm, thank you. Thank you. I feel much more centered now. Uh, 
and ready to, ready to jump into this uh, in a bigger way as well. So, um, okay, first off, <laughs> so I end up with the the week that whose title is "Man's Relationship to the Spiritual Universe." And um, Reverend Victoria Bomberry addressed this a few weeks back perfectly as well. And I, I'm going to do my bit here to, to, to clarify that as well. Uh, pronouns today are different than they were back then. And I am going to do my best to translate uh, Holmes's writing in this book from the male-dominant, male-centric pronoun of he and him and move that into a more inclusive use of pronouns and uh, and other terms. So I encourage you, if you're following along in the book, if you have a copy of the book and you're following along, I encourage you to look at anywhere the word man shows up or man's or his, or let's turn that into humanity. Let's start to shift that now. And a they and, and translating in your own mind is absolutely appropriate. Personally, I think it actually helps to deepen my comprehension of the material when I'm translating those old that old language into more uh, inclusive and more uh, contemporary language. So in my slides today, I am going to use more inclusive language and you will notice where and how and in some instances example and all instances examples of where I have changed those pronouns again to be a bit more of an inclusive language. So buckle up, get ready, get on board because we've only got so much time. Remember, include your questions in the comments. We'll get to them in a little bit after uh, I kind of go through this chapter. And this is a big, big chapter. Starts on page 206, runs to page 228. That's a lot of material to, uh, to cover. And so one of the things I'm going to dive into here, in the early part of this chapter, one of the, the central themes that Holmes wants us to remember is that we are drops in an ocean. And while I may not contain all that the ocean contains, everything I am is an expression of that oneness, of that allness. And that's, and that's just what we're calling God. We are all part of the one in a, in a major, in, in, there's no way around it. There's no way outside of it. There's nothing beyond the circle. So if we're all these drops of, of consciousness, then we are really the microcosm of God. We are the creative expression of the oneness that we call God, the macrocosm that we call God. And we're constantly thinking, we're constantly feeling these, if we call ourselves these drops of, or droplets of consciousness, we are thinking intelligent and feeling droplets. So in that, we are not here to suffer. We're not here to suffer in any way. Our inherent nature is freedom. So on page 107, Holmes says this, the science of mind and spirit makes a tremendous claim when it states that the individual should be free from the bondage of sickness, poverty, and unhappiness. It does, however, carefully set forth the conditions under which freedom does operate and the law is governing life. Remember, anytime Holmes uses a capital letter, he's referring back to the divine. So this is divine life. This is God life. This is the big L. This is the all oneness life. It does, however, carefully set forth the conditions under which freedom does operate and the law is governing life stating in no uncertain terms that unless we understand these conditions and obey these laws, we will not receive the full benefit of its teachings. So the science of mind sets out this, this mighty promise, and he's saying it here, right, that we uh, individuals should be free from bondage of sickness, poverty, and unhappiness. There is no need for sickness, poverty, or unhappiness. And in many ways, we become, therefore, there's this debate in, in science of mind going on a long time. Are we a theology of liberation or a theology of prosperity? And uh, this points to a theology of, of liberation, of personal freedom 
but also responsibility that goes with that personal freedom. So we are the creative center of our lives. We are a creative expression and outpicturing of God's life, of the one life. We're not here to create suffering. We're not here to, to, we're here to be free. But we also have to be responsive, responsible for, for what we're adding to the mixture. Right? He also says, freedom of will means the ability to do, say, and think as one wishes, to express life as one personally desires, to be able merely to think and dream of freedom would not be liberty. Freedom of will. We have that freedom of will. It means the ability to do, say, and think as one wishes. Yes. To express life as one personally desires. Absolutely. To be able merely to think and dream of freedom would not be liberty. So therefore, that implies we have to do some of the work too. We have to take and go out in the streets and do this work. That's part of it. This is, so here at Holmes, in the, in just a, a few lines later, is saying we are a theology of personal liberation and responsibility, and that responsibility is to be a theology of social action as well. <laughs> There's always a both and in Holmes and in the science of mind, and I love it, and I love it. So he's laying out his his belief in our relationship to this oneness and how we can use it and how we activate it to create the life we truly desire. In the next portion, he talks about how uh, when we're talking about the spirit uh, or that there is, uh, there, well, this is all from page 108, uh, 109. Humanity must be created with the possibility of limitless freedom and let alone to discover themselves. You and I are created with a possibility of limitless freedom, but we must be left alone to discover how we use that freedom and what that means. It is a solace to the mind when we come to understand that all human limitation from the standpoint of the divine within is unnecessary. That again, we are free. We just got to let it be. We've got to leave ourselves alone sometimes to discover, even knowing that we are on this path of free will. And on that same page, he finished, he continues, we must know definitively and consistently, definitely, sorry, and consistently that the universe is for us and not against us. So when we take these together over the, the essence of this section here, humanity must be created with the possibility of limitless freedom. And we have, and we've left alone to discover that ourselves, that we have that freedom and we can use that freedom. And we come to a point where it, we can relax because we come to recognize that limitation is unnecessary. We do not have to limit ourselves, that we are free to break down those, those self-imposed limitations, that we are free to go beyond those limitations, that we are free to create something new. And to be in that place that no matter what, no matter what is going on in our lives to recognize that the divine, the universe, that everything is for us, that everything's working on our behalf. You, folks, if you've heard me speak ever, I think in the last several years, you've probably heard me say this. And, uh, and if not, welcome to the club. Everything necessary for the absolute and complete fulfillment of your mission on this planet comes into your life exactly as necessary. Exactly as necessary. That's the law of the universe. But I got to be able to believe that. I've got to stay in that place and know no matter what, 
I am a divine emanation of God's life. I am a divine expression of the oneness taking form, taking shape, having experience. And if that's happening as my life, then that must be happening as your life as well. I'm not special in this. You're not special. In, none of us are special in that we can do this. All of us have the ability to use this power, to use the power of the presence, the intelligence, to, to be in that co-creative relationship. The thing is, how do we use it? Holmes gets into that. Now, he, we talk a little bit about the spirit, the soul, and the body in this chapter quite extensively. There's six pages in there, and, and in many ways, what, we're, what I believe we get to is a recognition on pages uh, 109.3 and 109.4. The age-long discussion of the problem of evil will never be answered until we realize that evil is not a thing of itself. It is simply the misuse of the law of freedom. Get that. That's a big line. The misuse of the law. It is simply the misuse of, misuse of the law of freedom. The problem of evil will be met only to the degree that we cease doing evil and do good. For evil will disappear when we no longer indulge in it. When the world sees the right and does it, then, and not until then, will the problem of evil be solved for the entire race. So e there is not a power for evil. There is a power for good, and we can use it. There is not a power for evil in the world. But there is our free will, our ability to misuse the law in a way that, that doesn't serve. That doesn't serve at all. So... We are, remember, our subconscious is compelled to receive what we put into it and demonstrate from that. And demonstrate from that. I want to jump over onto page 119 real quick with you. And I didn't create a slide for this because it's, it's, it's got it all. Um, we're starting about the middle of the page. It's technically the third paragraph. The encouraging message in all of this is, no matter what may be the subjective state of our thought, the conscious state can change it. Our conscious can change our subjective. And it is from our subjective that we are creating the conditions and experiences of our lives. Yes? Yes. It is what treatment, this is what treatment does. By consciously knowing that there is no inherent tendency toward limitation, no race suggestion operating through subjectivity. Nothing in, around, or through us that believes in or accepts limitation in any way, shape, manner, or form. Every part of this philosophy, every chapter, I find a way where Holmes is reinforcing the power of the one great gift, if you will, that science of mind has given to the world, and that's spiritual mind treatment. That's our, our form of prayer, that affirmative prayer. No matter what may be in the subject, um, the conscious state must now provide a higher contemplation, a spiritual realization, which says, I partake of the nature and bounty of all good, and I am now surrounded by everything which makes life worthwhile. A little bit farther down on that paragraph at the bottom of the page, whatever is held in consciousness until it becomes a part of the subjective side of thought tends to take place in the world of affairs. The reason that we do not demonstrate more easily is that the subjective state of our thought is too often neutralized by the objective state. Though often this is an unconscious process of thought. So we are being called to be more conscious and to constructively use our thought in creating a world that works for everyone. In creating the life we truly desire. Now, Holmes also continues through this into the next session, section where he talks about the Christ and the Antichrist. And we can look at this really as his way of saying, if you use the process, if you use these laws constructively, if 
you use this for good, then you are expressing the Christ consciousness. And if you're not, if you're exp using these, you're misusing the law of freedom. And, you know, what I've seen is most people that are misusing the law are misusing that law to, in order to, for personal gain, in order to expand their territory or in order to gain, get more of this or win or get the relation, get, 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 get rather than when we're using the law constructively and expressing the Christ consciousness, then we're give, 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 giving. We're giving. I, I can't see why anybody would rather, would, would rather be on the side of the equation that is trying to get that is misusing the law for personal gain, that is misusing the law. What happens when you misuse the law? You go to jail. That's what happens. <laughs> you go to jail. But what Holmes promises and what we teach in this philosophy is even that jail is a creation of our own making. And we have within us the power to change our thinking and change our lives. Yes. I believe this might be Brother Diego. So we change our thinking, we change our lives in the environment we live in. Thank you to the Facebook user. There's a link in there that lets you add, authorize StreamYard so we can see your name. That'd be cool if you like. If not, no worries. We're getting close to the question and answer stuff too, folks. So like, let those questions be forming. If there's stuff that I'm getting past a little bit too quickly for you, make sure you, you, you formulate that question uh, because we're going to have an opportunity to do that back and forth discussion a little bit more in just a few minutes because we are getting uh, deep into this chapter and the promise that Holmes makes is that as we recognize we live in unity, then we are activating the law of freedom and there are no limits whatsoever to what we may create. That is our relationship to the spiritual universe, but we've got to be in right relationship to that. Think about the relationships in your life. Whether it's a loved one, a partner, a family member, a, a, a kid, a child, you know, one of, one of your kids or a sibling. Those relationships, well, they take nurturing. We've got to support ourselves in those, nature, in those relationships. And we've got to understand that relationships mean that we're moving and we're changing and things are shifting. And we're still all working towards this place of bringing more good, right? Yes. So there is no God and us. We are not, we are not drops separate from the ocean. It's not possible. It's God as us. It is this oneness, this whole spiritual universe. The laws, the, the cause and effect, it is all expressing through us. And so really what we call our subjective mind, what we call our subjective mind, isn't ours. There is no the subjective of God or the subjective of the absolute or the subjective mind of the divine and our subjective mind. That what we call our subjective mind is simply us making use of the one mind. It is us making use of the universal subjective and bring and allowing that to come into form through us or through another. How many times have your prayers been answered by someone other than yourself? More often than not. More often than not, my prayers if, are answered by an experience that maybe I set in motion, but I'm not fulfilling. Maybe I didn't have anything to do with it. And it's just, wow, I'm there and I'm in this and this is my prayer. And then it demonstrates, hey, hey, 
cool. We're getting aligned and realize, and we learn how to use the subjective mind of God through our subjective mind and demonstrate. We are the hearts and the hands and the minds of the divine. So we have to come into this oneness of all life. And as I begin to wrap up here, I'm going to ask you to, if you've got your book with you, tur turn to page 127. And at the very bottom there, oneness with all law. When we know our oneness with God and law, what a great burden is removed. Any sense of opposition is removed from the consciousness which perceives unity. Any sense of limitation, any opposition is removed from the consciousness which perceives unity. Now flip the page over. Right there in the middle of that next little paragraph, we are bound by nothing except belief. You know, the, there's that old cartoon of a man climbs the mountain to visit the guru, and the guru says, would you like the truth that hurts or the truth that sets you free? They're both the same. We are bound by nothing except belief. That's the truth that hurts. There is nothing holding you back except yourself. <laughs> it's the good news and the interesting news. And it's the good news. It's the truth that hurts, but it's the truth that sets you free. Because when we come to realize that there is nothing limiting how I can show up, what I can accomplish, how I get to share this mighty expression of consciousness, making good, being on the side of good, bringing the Christ consciousness, there's no limitations. Then we can do anything we want to do. Because everything we're going to want to do is going to be in service, not to get, but to give. There is but one mind. Here is the point. Everything we experience, touch, taste, handle, and smell, environment, bodies, conditions, money, happiness, friends, all are effects. Not one piece of that is a cause in our lives. They're all effects. It is clear that the infinite and limitless possibilities of that one, of which humanity is a part, depend on, in our human expression, upon our own concept. If we are a point of personality in limitless mind, which we are, and if all our lives must be drawn from this one mind, which it must, there cannot be anything else, can there? And if there is nothing else, if there is nothing to move except mind, and if we are thinking center in mind, nothing is going to happen to us that does not happen through us. Nothing can happen to us that does not happen through us. The, work, the truth that hurts. Whether it be the result of our own erroneous conclusions, those of our grandfathers and grandmothers, or those of the race to which we belong, this is not in any sense fatalistic. For... We can change the trend of causation, which has been set in motion at any time we decide to do so. It is the absolute with which we are dealing and nothing less. We can change our conditions. We can change our thinking. We can change that causative action that moves into our lives and supports us in creating the life we truly desire. We do that through prayer. We do that through spiritual mind treatment. So let's get this moving. Let's get some questions and answers happening, folks. I know you're out there. I see the numbers. I see the click. I see you drop in and drop out. I see those. Um, how about some questions in the comments? Where are you? Where are you limiting yourself? Where are you? Where? What? Uh, what would support you in moving forward in this process of, of really coming to know your oneness with spirit? What quotes, what quotes don't make sense in here? <laughs> what part of this? And, uh, you know, one of the things I do like to do is sometimes is 
one of the most valuable pieces of this book is in near the back. It washed out. You can't see it. This is on page 605. This is part of the glossary. Uh, now, every one of these books has a glossary. Every version. Not all versions have the concordance in the back, which is even more valuable. However, Holmes's definition of law and from the glossary is mind in action. The creative medium of spirit is the great, great, is the great mental law of the universe. It is the law of the spirit is the universal law of mind. Right? The laws of mind and spirit must be understood if they are to con be consciously used for definite purposes. There is no limit to the law, but there appears to be a limit to one's understanding of it. Right, So we want to re always remember these laws are running, are operating, whether we understand this or not, whether we're conscious of it or not, or whether we're using it consciously or not. So people that run around, oh, I can't do this, and I can't do that, and I hate this, all of that is saying the universe's job is to say, yes, you're right. So people that accuse, uh, you know, new thoughters of, of being uh, a little airy fairy in our, in our affirmations when we can't see the results yet, we've got to be in that atmospheric, that vibration that says, hey, this is what's, what I desire. This is what I know to be true and, and possible for me. And I'm going after that and I'm not letting anything get in the way of that. Not for me, not so I get something, but so that I have the ability, the resources, the feeling, the tone to be able to give into the system. Hey, Wayne, great question. What fosters a living faith in oneness, individually and collectively? That's a great question. A living faith in oneness. I think we could put this in one word, demonstrations. We could call demonstrations examples. The, the, the proof is in the pudding, if you will. As I, as I have traversed my own education and my own exploration of this philosophy and how to use these universal principles and, and how to do so in a way that's supporting and giving, I have found that the demonstrations are the greatest proof the greatest way to foster because faith, faith is the belief in things unseen. Right? We believe in something that is unseen, but then it becomes seen. That is, that is a, uh, another part of what is behind this thing called spiritual mind treatment and our form of affirmative prayer, right? We are not in, in prayer. We are not begging God as some outside entity to deliver to us our good. I trust that today's talk helps us to understand that a bit. I can go back and do it again. Uh, in prayer, we're in that place of knowing that the universe must be for us. There can be nothing against us. We are constantly in the flow of this divine energy and moving into experience. And as we pray, as we utilize uh, science of my treatments, uh, spiritual mind treatments, as we utilize this technology, this process, then we start to demonstrate and we start to amass evidence. Um, I heard, a, this is it. Wow. How do we foster a better relationship to the divine? Yes. And that, and that in, adds in as well, brother LZ. Thank you, sir. Uh, LZ is part of our lineup here on Saturday morning. So thank you for being in here. So, and I would say, how do we foster that? It ties in as well as practice. So our treatment work, our prayer work, our, our journaling, our meditation, our visioning, all of the different technologies, modalities that we use foster that relationship and foster our sense of faith. As we see the demonstrations, our faith grows. As our faith grows, we're, we're more inclined and we're more committed to our practices, to fostering the relationship. And, and there's a piece in all of this that plays in as well that is that absolute sense of trust. 
right, of absolute trust that you got to give this stuff a chance to, to work. Here in Colorado, it's uh, springtime in the Rockies, which means there's certain days when it's uh, you could you could be outside in shorts planting your garden and getting everything growing. And the next day you need to take everything inside, hide it in the basement, cover it with blankets because it's going to freeze and storm. And then two days later, we'll take everything back out. So you, you start your gardens in Colorado in boxes and, and planters, move them inside and outside in the early spring. But what we don't do is we don't dig them up to see if they're growing. We put those seeds in the ground. We put those seedlings in the ground early and we give them what, we, what they need. We give them moisture. We give them sunlight. We give them warmth. We give them good soil. We give it what it needs. And then we trust that that plant is growing. We don't need to dig it up and see if there's a sprout yet. Unless you plant your potatoes too close to the top, then the sprout just, you know, it, you know, it's growing. <laughs> That's okay too. Hey, okay. Now I know I just, I change, I shift. I take that potato and take it a little deeper. In that case, maybe I do need to dig it up. But for the most part, we take this experience of, I believe, our spiritual practices foster both the relationship and the sense of faith, but they have to be instilled with, with a deep sense of trust as well, that this stuff works. And that comes with time. It comes with experience. It comes with lived experience. With being able to say, here's my demonstration and here's a demonstration that I've witnessed or that I've served someone. Practitioners are the, the best way to do this, folks. Right? If, you, if, you, if you're struggling with, with that sense of either of these aspects, how to have a sense of faith or how to nurture the relationship itself, then by all means, connect with a, a with one of our practitioners or connect with me or connect with one of our ministers, whoever it is that is your spiritual teacher in the new thought philosophy, connect, set up, kick down for an appointment and schedule a session and get into that place of celebrating, recounting, honoring all the places where you have demonstrated according to the power of your word. Sometimes that happens like that. Sometimes it takes a little bit, but start to amass the evidence for your success. Recently, I was trolling through some of my old material and I came across something that I was using at one point that wasn't mine to begin with as well. Uh, and I don't even know if where I got it from is where it originated from, but it, Really, the first place I was made aware of it was by Dr. Fred Vogt, Minister Emeritus in Memoriam at Mile High Church and one of, one of the leaders of New Thought for quite a long time. While I never had the chance to meet or study uh, with Dr. Fred directly, um, I did have the chance to study with his wife and to study from his teachings. And he used he had a saying that if you were pulled into a court of law, and in that court of law, you were accused of being a religious scientist, a spiritual person, uh, living the science of mind. If you were accused of being a part of this philosophy, would there be enough evidence to convict you? Think about that. Do you surround yourself with an environment with, with people and with information and media that supports your evolution that is on the side of the Christ consciousness? Yes, Wayne, putting on the Christ every day. And don't let that be an overstimulant. That let, just let that be the normal, putting on the Christ every day. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, see, I would agree as well. When I think about our relationship to the divine, I view this as a circle within a bigger circle. We're a point within the larger one and included within it. So we only need to realize this. The drop in the ocean. The point on the circle. And you. Thanks for the setup, brother. And you are absolutely necessary for the completion, for the wholeness of that circle. 
you are absolutely necessary for the fullness of the ocean. You, your life, what you bring to this thing called life. You are absolutely necessary to what's being created. That in my mind is a huge, is it also a major part of the promise that is the science of mind. And that is why I believe this book is so enduring and this philosophy is so enduring. And as I said at the top of our experience here today, there's a lot of ways to interpret it. And just like any of the great books, any of the great recordings of human consciousness, there are countless ways to interpret it. What I mo love the most about the science of mind is Holmes is really clear. And he stays really true. He stays true to the, the peace. He stays true to his spiritual mind treatment. To staying with the one. And never deviating from it. I want to thank you for being with me this morning. I, uh, unless there's any other questions, we're going to start wrapping this up here. And mm, mm, I just feel... I, when I get in and I start really studying the science of my, I study this book. Spent the last day or so with that chapter. Every time there is a new revelation, every time there is a new way to say, here's another piece of evidence that I live this stuff, that I'm using these principles, that I'm demonstrating this word I speak. And every day, every time I read it, there's a new opportunity to say, okay, and how do I do that a little bit more? How do, how do I take this message a little bit further out into the world? How do I, how do I express the gifts within me just a little bit more? part of what we're all about here on the New Thought Media Network. Hang out around here long enough and we will convince you of your magnificence. We will support you in being all you have come here to be. We will we will uh, we'll sell you on you. How's that? Stick around and then we'll we'll support you in make, creating the demonstrations so that you sell yourself on yourself. Uh, Kathleen, Patricia, welcome, welcome. First time here, right on. Thank you for being with us. Glad you're here. Keep coming back. And I encourage you, Kathleen, and all of you that are watching, check out the past episodes on our Facebook page, our YouTube page. Uh, those go a long way to explaining and sharing where we are. If you have the book, be here weekly, every month, every week, 9 a.m., and again, watch it at any time you want. It's on demand. Uh, so please check it out. And, uh, and we have a, a host of great folks that are a part of our lineup. And next week again, it, we go on to the next portion of the book, The Nature of Being. Uh, it's called The Summary of the First Page. It's, uh, it's a lesson in, a, in and of itself. And that's why we've got the amazing practitioner Tracy Brown with us next week to share on that. So I want to thank you for being here. I'm going to say a quick word of blessing, a quick word of thanks, a quick word of gratitude for all that has happened here this day, for the amazingness that has revealed itself, and for that great sense of knowing that there is a philosophy, there is a power within that is operating, and I have activated that power. I, I witness each one that is activating that power within to go out into the world and be the Christ consciousness, and be the consciousness of the oneness, of being a demonstration of the oneness that brings forth a greater blessing, a greater demonstration, greater vision of this life we call, of this thing we call life, of this vision of a world that works for everyone. I am thrilled beyond, beyond measure for all the good, for all the glory, for all the greatness that each one that hears this word is revealing in their lives and as their lives. For I know we are each absolutely necessary. Your gift, the gift you bring to this planet absolutely necessary for the evolution of human consciousness, for the next step forward in human beingness on planet Earth. All is well. All is great. I am thrilled and grateful. 
and I release this word into that law, that universal law that must demonstrate knowing that by the power of the universe, this word is already taking form. I release this word with a grateful heart and I let it be. I loose this word into the law and I claim it as done. And so it is. Mm, so it is. And so it is. Ooh. Hey, I want to say thank you folks for being with us. And I want to encourage you to please hang out for just another moment or two longer while we say a couple of quick thank yous to our sponsors and those that make this programming possible. First up, let's hear from our good friends over at CSL Denver. Yeah, that's the old one. <laughs> we did it again, folks. We left the old video in the commercial loop, and that's not what we're supposed to do. That's okay. Uh, join us tomorrow, tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Mountain Time for the Center for Spiritual Living Denver. Uh, their special guest tomorrow is the Right Reverend Paula Bellagier, and will be a great great experience as well. Hey, let's take a look at what is coming up in the future as well. Going in the flow with Rev Skip starting on Fridays in just a couple of weeks. I invite you to keep coming back and checking that out and being with us. It's going to be a great, great program here on the network. All right, before we get out of here, let's remember next week, Tracy Brown, The Nature of Being right here, 9 a.m. Mountain Time. And if you've got a little uh, extra time this weekend, check out our dear friend Leslie Goodwin, Reverend Leslie, and her podcast, SexySpiritualityPodcast.com. I had a chance to sit down with Leslie and uh, another guest, Sharice Patron, uh, a number of weeks back, a few weeks back, we sat down and had a great conversation and uh, just released yesterday on their podcast. Check it out. It's a really fun conversation around new thought and new media and, uh, you know, we happen to be right at the nexus of all of that. So thank you. Please do hit the donate button. If you are new to our community, please know we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. And every donation goes a long, long way to help and share this message around the world and reach more people with what we're doing. There's a donate button in the in the description of today's video. Thank you for that. And if you're one of our regular contributors and already on one of our committed giving plans on a monthly basis, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being making sure that we can be here and continue to share this great message. I'm Rep Briz. I'm out of here for now. Uh, we'll be back here on the network later this afternoon with Spirit Says Sing by our good brother Diego Reyes and uh, Spirit Says Sing is a great show. Happens at six o'clock tonight. Join us for that. Until next time, peace and blessings. Go forth and be love. Bye now.